Hi there, welcome to the Planet Zoo Every Animal Franchise Zoo, where I'm attempting to put every single animal in the game into one franchise zoo. This week, there's seven animals going into several new habitats, starting with the animal that I forgot last week, the mandrill. Indeed, for some reason, I skipped over the mandrill, and I did mention it at the start of last week's video. <laughs> A lot of people were very interested in the fact that I forgot it, so I'll be making an extra special effort with the mandrill today to make up for that. Now, mandrills can be housed with the red river hog, but I don't think it's all that suitable. Red river hog's a bit of an odd one. They get into species bonus with a lot of other animals, including some that probably aren't quite appropriate, like the mandrill. It is coming up soon, that one, but the mandrills, I'm gonna leave them on their own for this case. Since I did forget about the mandrills last week, I thought we'd start off and do something special for them here. I noticed that mandrills can't swim and you can actually use the water as a barrier for them. You just have to obey certain rules. So I think it has to be more than one meter deep and it has to be more than three meters wide. It's an interesting idea and it is something that I've seen in real life where they'll have like a really low fence for the guests to look past. And then there's a water hazard that is the natural barrier for them because they will refuse to go in the water. So I thought I'd give that a go for this one, create a bit of a mandrel island feel to it. The hard shelter that I've put in for the mandrels is up against the guest barrier so they can look in and see what they're up to in there. Most of the walls and stuff in this one is made out of concrete and it was getting a bit annoying. It was really fiddly work because nothing was aligning with either relative to the axis of the concrete or to the world grid. So it was all custom blooming shapes that I had to try and align into the right places. Lucky for you, I probably edited out most of the fiddling around I did with this to get it all into place. So you've been spared having to watch me move bits of concrete around for hours on end. I think lesson learned, the panel pieces in Planet Zoo are really good for pulling together bits of walls and stuff, but they're quite fiddly if you manipulate them and move them around so it's not in the default setting. At least with the build wall pieces, they're always aligned, aren't they? And once you start using the panels, things start getting complicated. Good job I have quite a good amount of patience when it comes to building these things. So if I am having to fiddle with it to get into, into the right place, it's not such a big deal for me. I'll just get on with it and keep going until it's done. Something unique for this build, I made a custom climbing frame and this has one of the trees as the central focal point for it. I figured since we've got this big open space in the middle of the mandrel habitat, it could do with something like a custom climbing frame in there. Although I have also added a couple of the default climbing frames that I use for general apes and monkey builds. Rest of the planting in this enclosure, it's all tropical stuff. Always good to work with the tropical stuff. So shall we take a look? Welcome to Mandrill Island. I spent a bit of time and built up some of the decoration around this habitat. Occasionally I do remember to think about the pathing as well as the habitat itself. Hard shelter is a basic concrete building there, not much going on with it I'm afraid, so we won't linger on that bit. Here we can see how the natural water barrier is working. So a nice low fence, hopefully the guests don't decide to jump over and go for a bit of a swim there. And the mandrels won't even attempt to get in the water, so a good barrier. Inside the habitat, I've got a load of climbing stuff here. Some of this is custom built. Well, actually it's all custom built, but some I've just stolen from some of my other habitats. I always say if you make something that works, don't feel bad reusing it for other habitats. It's totally fine. Anyway, mandrels do like a lot of enrichment items. So we've got a foraging box and of course mandrel here giving the old sprinkler a go. Then, like I say, the focal point of this habitat is this um, climbing frame that's surrounding the tree here. And they are drawn to this, so that's nice. Let's, let's see them go up. Yep, there we go. Bit funky um, climbing there, but I'm not gonna hold that against the game. Mandrels seem happy with it. Yeah, indeed, you tell them. To be honest, the amount of climbing stuff I've got in here is a little bit overkill. I've far surpassed their requirements for climbing in here with all of this wood and beams and stuff. 
I just felt like I wanted to fill this outside space with something interesting though, so that's why all of this is there. Nice leaping action there from Mandrill. Anyway, that's Mandrill's done, let's move on to the next animal. So next on our list is the Babirusa. Babirusa doesn't get any interspecies enrichment with any other animal, so this is going to be another solo build. Space-wise, they don't require a lot of space, which is always nice, and the Babirusa is a confident animal, which is allowing me to create something that's relatively simple and not a lot of fiddling around with this one, I'll be honest. I think after doing a lot of complicated builds, sometimes it's nice to do something that's really easy and simple. About the most complex part of this build was creating a custom fence. And even with that, it's just a basic wooden and mesh panel fencing. The habitat itself is relatively flat. I haven't done a lot to manipulate the terrain with this one. And the hard shelter in here, this is the hard shelter that I created for the Komodo dragon. And I've just stolen that and used that for the Babarusa as well. They're a Southeast Asian animal, so it fits in well. I love the thatch from the Indonesian roof pieces as well. I really wish that we got this as a standard build piece. The thatch roof from the South America and the base game, I'm not really keen on those two thatch pieces. They don't look great. The Indonesian one is much better, but because this is only a small piece, you have to fiddle with it to get it to work. Would be nice if we had this as a standard roof piece, but hey ho, we'll make it work. For the planting with the Babarusa, they like a little bit of planting, but not loads. So I was able to put in a few plants and stuff and pretty this up a little bit with that. But yeah, really not much to this build. So let's take a quick look. So right next door to the mandrels, we've got a little pig enclosure here. Here are the Babarusas. And hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I haven't had time to look it up and I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Is it Barbarusa, Babarusa, Babyrusa? I don't know. Hey ho, it's a pig. <laughs> there we go. You can just call you piggy from now on, can't we? Anyway, really not much to the Babarusa build here. It was a nice, simple enclosure to make. Occasionally, it's great to go into the game and just create something without looking too much into it, doing research and stuff. I get a general sense of what pigs would like in an enclosure, and I feel like I've met all their needs with this, so we won't dawdle then. Let's get right on to the next animal. Inyala is next. And I definitely know I'm pronouncing that one right because I watched a documentary on Inyala's not long ago and I was like, oh, so it's not Nyala. <laughs> I've been saying that for years. Anyway, Inyala's get into species enrichment with the southern white rhino, so a combo habitat for us now. Just two rhinos needed, but they are going to take up a lot of room, so I'm glad we've got enough space over in this corner of the zoo to accommodate them. When I was pulling together this habitat, I did struggle a little bit with the concept and what I was going to do for it. We've already added the two other rhinos in the game into this zoo, and I tried two very very different style of habitats for the, the two different rhinos. So by the time I've got to the southern white rhino, I'm all out of ideas on doing something unique. Recently I pulled together a side project and that involved a lot of concrete and breeze block building materials. And I know some people have an issue with those materials, but I still think they do serve a purpose in the zoo. So for this build, I thought I'd go back and do something quite traditional and basic with the breeze block here. Again, we've got a big hard shelter in here to accommodate the rhinos and I do struggle sometimes making the big hard shelters because they always end up like sheds. So with this one, I was like, why don't I just create a shed and be happy with it? Anyway, the guest barrier was the most difficult part of this build. I've created a trough style barrier. So this is one where you've got a big drop and a gap big enough that the animals, they won't be able to drop into there. This is great because you can create a nice low barrier after the drop and it means the guests get a really nice view. Now, this works perfectly for the Southern White Rhino because they can't jump over stuff. For the Inyala, I was a bit worried that they might be able to escape, but thankfully the gap's big enough that they can't jump over it and won't even attempt to get down there. Anyway, that is the basis of this habitat. We're up to adding the plants, so why don't we take a look? 
So a rather big enclosure here for the Inyala and the Southern White Rhinoceros. I have gone back to using breeze block and concrete for this one, which yeah, I do default to that occasionally. I've got a gap style of barrier going on here. So a natural ditch that the animals can't get across and they won't attempt to go down there. For enrichment, we've got the mud bath here for the rhinos. And well, I did add this other shed building here for the Inyalas. They're a shy animal, so they need to have places that they can escape to out of the guest's view. So I'm hoping this works for that. Let's see, can we see the animals around anywhere? Ah, it looks like they're still all up at the back there. So here we go, let's see the rhinos checking out their shelter there. Giving it a good nosy there before they go in. And Inyala, got one round the front here. Just your usual antelope looking African animal there. So yeah, that is really it for the Inyala and the Southern White Rhino. Not much more I can talk about for these guys. So yeah, why don't we just move straight on to the next animal? Next up is the Okapi. That's yet another African species. And would you believe it? It's time. Finally, Red River Hog, it's time for you to go into the enclosure with another animal. I think Red River Hogs could live quite happily with the Okapi, so that's what we're gonna put together. So combo habitat build here, another antelope and another pig. The enclosure isn't very big though, and the Okapi is a shy animal, so I've had to do a custom barrier here and use that one-way glass because I know they're gonna get stressed. Aside from that, this enclosure, very much like it was for the Babarusa I did earlier. It's, there's not a lot of thought and plan gone into this one. I think the sessions that I've done this week to create the habitats, I've just sort of got into a groove with them. And yeah, you probably could say I've got into a more relaxed session this week. I did spend a lot of time on the mandrel at least, but yeah, the um, Okapi and Red River Hog habitat. I think it's the pig thing. As soon as I see a pig in the enclosure, I just go into default pig mode, I guess. That said, there's only so much you can do with the landscape for the pigs and the antelopes as well. Although I'm gonna get pulled up here by calling the Okapi an antelope, aren't I? Cause it's, I think it's more related to the giraffe actually. I just lumped them all into the same grouping. They're just hooved animals that look a bit like deer. <laughs> Way oversimplifying it, I'm sure. Anyway, a good simple build this one. No water requirements, relatively flat land and just a few plants and decorations here or there to bring it to life. Right, so checking out the Okapi and Red River Hog combined build here. Nice simple build. Relatively undemanding animals, both of them. Most complex part of this is the custom barrier here. A copy is a shy animal, so we have to accommodate for that with the one-way glass. Not exactly difficult though. Like I say, this is another one of those habitats that is relatively simple to pull together. Anyway, let's take a look at the Okapi up close. Really is a rather strange looking animal, isn't it? So it's like two or three animals just combined together. And I hear the Red River Hog up there. Let's see, yep, just sniffing around the plants at the start of the habitat there. It is rather bare down here at the back of the enclosure. I made the habitat a little bigger than it needed to be, which meant I was able to push more of the plantings up front without going over the animal's desired planting maximum needs. In terms of hard shelter, yeah, this was a really quick, easy to put together shelter. Using the base game thatch roof for once, thought I'd give it a go. And it's the conservation wood I've used for the slats on the, the side walls there. But yeah, not a difficult shelter to put together for this animal's enclosure. Sometimes I think it's okay to give yourself a break like that and do something easy. And on that note, I'd say we can move on now to the next animal then. Flying through them today, aren't we? It's the platypus. 
yet another odd looking animal. They're tiny, so they don't need a lot of room, but they do have water requirements and that includes deep water. So putting this one together, I have cheated a little bit. For some reason, I was having a look through my blueprinted shelters. And I think I was looking for the capybara shelter for something else. Anyway, I came across this cat shelter that I created. I think it was for the Eurasian lynx. And you know, with the green on the side wall for the shelter, I thought it would fit really well with the platypus. So rather creating a hard shelter from scratch, I've used this as a basis and manipulated it a little bit so that it can fit into this enclosure quite well. Nice thing about the platypus is it's got my three favorite things. It doesn't need a lot of space. It's a confident animal, so you can have an open barrier and it can't get over a small barrier so you can have a really low one too. There was a little fiddling around with the water for this enclosure because they do have a deep diving need. Just like with the beavers though from last week, I do think this is a bit overkill to say that they need the same deep diving mechanics that the genuinely deep diving animals need. I've watched stuff about the platypus before and yes, they do dive into the water to get their food, but much like the beavers, that you're not gonna see them dive into ridiculous depths. Hence why for the platypus, I've not created a deep diving viewing area for the guests to view them deep diving. Just like with the beavers, they can deep dive. I've got the area in there, but it's more about watching them when they're on the surface, not when they're deep diving. So here we go, two platypuses in the zoo now. Or is that platypi? <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, it's a teeny tiny water loving creature, this one. And yeah, got to say, out of all the animals we put in today, this certainly takes the award for being the weirdest. Definitely looks like several creatures all in one. The platypus is semi-aquatic, so spends some of its time in the water, spends some of the time on land. So the habitat is a mixture of land and water. They're a confident species, so they're not gonna get upset with the guests looking at them here. So that means we've got a lovely open fence that I could use. And the fencing backs right onto the deep diving section of the water area for them. I'm guessing that the platypuses spend more time in the water than they do out, so I wanted that near to where the guests would be viewing. Up the back is a little bit of spare space, and then that backs into the hard shelter I've got here. I think, I can't remember, but I think the platypus may be one of those animals that'll use a burrow. But on principle, I don't use the burrows in franchise mode because I think it gives the guests a bad view of the animals. So instead, we've got one of these above ground hard shelters here. So I guess one thing to note with the planting in this enclosure, I've added a lot of this aquatic plant because on the surface, it looks good but when you go under the water yeah that doesn't look right does it I left this in because I was watching something recently about platypuses and it was showing them diving into a river and the river had lots of vegetation like this on top of it so I wanted to do something similar for my enclosure here problem is the platypuses they don't have any plants that fit the bill apart from this one so I'm making do and living with the fact that it looks a bit weird if you're looking at it from underneath the water. Hey ho, we'll just not look at it that often from underneath. On that note, that is the platypuses done. And that is everything for this week because something rather unnerving and special is coming up next week. Indeed, it's time. Time for the polar bear. And the polar bears are going to be a nightmare. They need a lot of space. They need a lot of water. I'm pretty certain this is going to be the biggest challenge of this franchise zoo to date. So join me next week for that one. As ever, thanks for watching today. I'll catch you in the next video.